Thank you. So uh, the, the results that we're going to present now is, uh, they are the outcome of a joint activity between uh, uh, Koban Geisler and uh, Beyond Gravity. So uh, uh, we were the, we at Geisler, we were the prime contractor. Uh, so uh, I will uh, introduce this work uh, and then uh, hand over to uh, Wilhelm, who will do the, the more interesting part of the presentation, I believe. Um, in uh, the case for both of us is that we are presenting a work that has been carried out by uh, our colleagues. So um, ESA initiated uh, an activity uh, named uh, Reference Design and Basic Software for Single Board Computer based on the year 740. The objective of this activity was to create a reference design and make that available to European industry. So this was also uh, meant to seed uh, SBC uh, developments within Europe. Uh, there were uh, additional, let's say, uh, sub-objectives. For example, one was to have a preference for uh, European parts uh, in the bill of material. Um, the work split uh, that we had was that uh, Geisler was responsible for the overall activity, the software design and uh, the FPGA design. Uh, we, will be, uh, we will have a look at the overall architecture uh, in a moment. Uh, Beyond Gravity in uh, Sweden were responsible for the hardware design and validation and for significant parts of the hardware analysis. Uh, they we were also supported by Beyond Gravity in Finland uh, that were responsible for defining and specifying the uh, elegant breadboard test equipment and to define test cases for, for that. Uh, we also had uh, uh, involvement from, uh, from LSIs. So we had uh, ADS, OHB and TAS involved who provided uh, feedback and uh, requirements for, for this work. Um, the hardware overview of the resulting reference design uh, looks like this. So this was based uh, on uh, implementation of compact PCI serial space. Uh, it was before uh, the updated standards were released from the ADA activities. So we have a, uh, on the back plane, we have a dual star eight space wire interfaces connected from the 740. We have a multi-drop uh, redundant CAN bus. We have uh, a full mesh uh, support using high-speed serial links, space fiber connected to the FPGA. We have a multi-drop uh, I2C bus uh, connected to the RTG4 FPGA that we have on the board. And we also have alarms and other utility signals. Uh, when it comes to onboard memory, uh, we have uh, uh, the SDRAM connected to the ER740, we boot for a um, uh, parallel PROM, but we also have a spy flash for keeping larger uh, application images. And uh, thanks to the support of 3D+, Plus, we were also be able to design in support for uh, NAND flash and DDR2 SDRAM. And those interfaces are connected to the uh, RTG4 uh, FPGA. Um, the GR740 and RTG4 are connected to each other via parallel PCI, UART, and uh, GPIO interfaces. And in addition to this, there, there are uh, a number of interfaces on the front edge uh, of the board. Um, power consumption uh, is uh, uh, roughly 30 watts. Uh, then we also assume that the FPGA is fully utilized. Uh, and I should mention that the DDR2, NAND, and the uh, Space Fiber Links, or other HSSL, uh, from the reference design perspective, those are uh, defined as optional uh, items. Uh, but there are footprints and so on uh, for them in, in the design. Um, I will very briefly touch on the software here, because we, uh, again, have limited time, and we have a dedicated software presentation that will, will cover the extensions here. Uh, at Geisler, we did work on developing the boot software, and there were also improvements in peripheral drivers for the CAN, PCI host, and uh, SPI controller. Uh, so this complements the work that has been done in uh, the development of the RTEMS uh, QDP. Um, in, uh, in the software area, there was also this test application development. 
uh, together with uh, EGSC software to assist with board uh, verification and validation. And uh, that was also something that was designed with the intent of being reused for other implementations of this SPC. When it comes to the FPGA VHDL design that uh, goes into the RTG4 uh, FPGA on this board, uh, we did a top level design making use of IP cores from the ESA IP core library. So the only thing that was missing in the ESA IP core library was a PCI uh, controller, uh, and that is something that we then uh, contributed as part of this uh, reference design package. So in the FPGA design, we have the interface to communicate with the ER740 through PCI. Uh, the internal interconnect within the FPGA is based on AMBA2. Uh, we also make use of on-chip memory, uh, UART, uh, and uh, GPIO ports. Uh, and then we have these uh, utility and uh, alarm signals as well as PPS distribution. So this design making use of other ESIP cores uh, is also something that's in the works to be provided as part of this uh, reference package. And now I will uh, hand over to Wilhelm from Beyond Gravity to continue this presentation. Yes, thank you, Jon. Uh, so I'm from Beyond Gravity, and we also change names quite often. Uh, Ruvag Space uh, was the name before, and before that was Saab space or Saab Ericsson space going back even further. Um, so I will go into a bit more in, in the details uh, in the hardware design. Uh, so in the beginning of this study, there was a trade-off looking at uh, the two main standards, uh, Space VPX and the compact PCI zero space. And as Jan said, compact PCI series space was selected as the baseline. Uh, and one of the main reasons for this is that this has also been selected in the ADA standardize, standardization activities. And however, as John also said, there has been several improvements to the compact PCI series space uh, in the ADA specifications. So, so this design is not fully compliant to, to AIDA anymore. But I will come back to this topic and what we will do uh, about that later in the presentation. Um, so I hope it's no surprise by now that the, the processor in this design is the GR740. Otherwise I would not be here today. And uh, to complement this, uh, we have the RGD4 FPGA. And it is the FPGA then that we have to provide this the additional flexibility in the design, can implement glue logic, additional uh, mission specific functions, and so on from, for a board like this. Uh, and the main, the main interface, the communication interface between these two devices is the, the parallel PCI bus. Uh, I know that other interfaces was considered in this study, and there was a trade-off made, and, um, but the best option for this design was the parallel PCI. For example, the space wire interfaces are needed for uh, external communication. So this is also a bit of repetition from what Jan has presented, um, but we have a lot of memories, uh, both to the processor and the FPJ. Uh, both the image stored in an MRAM device, uh, the application images in the SPI flash memory. And for the processing memory, we have the SD-RAM 512 megabyte with additional check bits then for error correction. And since the PCI bus share pins with the SD-RAM bus, we use the, uh, the option with the 48 bit for the SD-RAM here. Uh, yeah. 
and then the for the FPJ we have the option uh, with additional memories if you would need it. Uh, it could be good to have if you if you want to implement uh, uh, applications which would need a lot of buffer memories, uh, buffer space, and when the the on chip memory capabilities on the RGD4 is not sufficient for the application. Uh, Backplane communication is basically, according to compact PCI serial space, uh, high-speed serial links uh, for uh, high-speed communication. Uh, we have the space wire for the medium range communication and the CAN bus for, for lower speed communication. This is typically used, I mean, if we compare to the ADA work, the canvas will typically be used for communication, communicate with IO systems uh, within the same unit. Um, a few interfaces on the front panel, space wire, a bunch of general purpose IO, uh, and uh, debug interfaces. So, since we have this design with a lot of high-speed signals, uh, we have selected the, the Megatron 6 uh, material for the PCB. And the thing with this material is that the thermal properties here is not the same as for uh, a ceramic component, for example. So you can imagine if you have two, two materials uh, glued together, and they expand in a different way in high and low temperature, you will have some, an increased risk of cracks. Uh, and especially when you look at this case, you have uh, the RGG4 soldered to the PCB. Uh, you might have cracks in the solder joints and so on. So to solve this, uh, we have gone for the uh, a solderless mounting concept. So as you can see in the figure here in the illustration, we have a, a top plate and a bottom plate. And what we basically what we do is that we use these plates and we press the RGD4 to the PCB. And in between the RGD4 and the PCB, we have some kind of a, an interposer uh, with some kind of gold-plated uh, mesh structure. So this will ensure that we have the electrical connection between the device and the PCB. Uh, and this will then give us a more robust design uh, covering a wider range of temperatures. Um, for the power, we have the 12 volt uh, power input from the back plane and we have a two step uh, conversion to avoid failure propagations in the design. And uh, power consumption. <coughs> on the worst case power consumption is 30 watt. <coughs> Sorry. So this will, this also includes uh, having a full FPJ as well. So this is quite high for a board like this, especially when you have this compact PCI serial space with a wedge lock mechanism. So it can be a bit tricky. <coughs> so one of the ma main activities here, uh, or the main goals was to design and manufacture a, a breadboard. And this is the result. And I think this is on the table over here as well. And this has been successfully used to, uh, to test the different onboard functions and memories and external interfaces. Um, and then we also have flight design for this uh, with additional analysis. So I will present some of this. Uh, the thermal design and the thermal aspect here is quite interesting, I think. So 
the design is a uh, conduction cooling design, and the heat will be transferred uh, out to the crate and rest of the, the mechanics through this wedge lock that you have on the top and bottom side of the board. In, in the figure here, it's to the right and left. So the, the RTT4 and the GR740 is the two com components which will, they dissipate the most of the heat in the design. So in, in the top figure you have the, the red blob is the RTG4 and the GR740 you can see in the, in the lower figure in the middle and the red circle. So these are the two problematic components. And as I said, with this design, it's quite high uh, power dissipation. We have the wedge lock, which can be tricky as well. Um, so the results from this analysis is that we have about 38 uh, degrees of increased board temperature. Um, we have a lot of other analysis as well. I will not go into the details here uh, since it's a bit beyond my expertise and uh, but there are structural analysis, worst case analysis, uh, uh, part stress, reliability, radiation and so on. But all of these, uh, the results of this can be downloaded as, as well. So there is now a design data package for the flight model that you can download, follow the link in the presentation here. So you will have a lot of documentation, we'll have schematics, FPGA design, the layout, and manufacturing files, and so on. Uh, and also the, all of the reports for the, uh, from the analysis of the flight design. And now I will also take the opportunity to, to show you what our future plans are uh, beyond gravity and what we will do with this design. Uh, so our intention is to continue the work here uh, with the goal of having uh, final fully qualified product uh, and we call this the, the Oryx single board computer and this is a work that we are currently planning together with Cobham Geisler And the vision here, or uh, the idea behind this is that the Oryx single board computer will be some kind of a, you can say a cornerstone in what we call a modular data handling system. Uh, so this is uh, very much like the ADA concept uh, that ESA are pushing for. So the idea is that we have a standardized backplane, we have standardized form factors, and a bunch of off-the-shelf modules, like the single board computer, but power modules, mass memory modules as well. So having all these modules, uh, we have this building set, and we can design uh, units for specific applications, like an OPC or a remote terminal unit or other things. And the intention is also to make this, the Oryx SPC uh, will be compliant to ADA uh, as well. Um, and I, do, I don't know if ADA is uh, known by all of you, so I put in a slide here just to show the concept. Um, so it's basically a rack-based system with standardized backplane, standardized modules, the set of specifications and uh, things like that. So this is a cooperation between the ESA and the space industry in Europe. And it is also based on the compact PCI zero space, but there has been a lot of updates uh, and improvements to fit the different needs that has been identified during these aid activities. So the unit supports up to 12 slots, two system slots and 10 peripheral slots. And 
backplane communication is uh, kind of like the compact PCI series space with the CAN space wire and, and space fiber. So this is what we see as the, the Oryx SPC. It will be based on this reference design um, and we will make updates to comply with ADHA. We will also add a couple of more interfaces on the front panel to fit all the, the needs that we see. And the intention is that we can use this SPC in both in the, as a system controller in the system slots, in an ADA system, but also in the peripheral slot uh, when you need additional payload processing and so on. And finally, uh, this SPC will also be the processing part in an OBC function. So we will hopefully have uh, a second board implementing the, the telecommand tele uh, telemetry and the configuration functions to have this uh, full OBC. And that's it for me. So thank you for your attention.